Hello again. What is going on? Peace and blessings to all of you. Hello. Thank you for joining me, sitting with me, sharing this energy space this evening. Uh, Jasmine Atten here. If you're new to my channel, for everyone else, welcome back. Um, so tonight's video is somewhat of a continuation. Um, I am going to talk to you guys a little bit about self-healing, uh, spiritual healing, self-love, and what I have been doing, what I've recently implemented, what I've been doing, and what's been working for me on this um, amazing journey path called life, <laughs> spiritual path of life. Um, I did a video recently, a couple weeks ago, uh, where I talked about a, a ritual that one could do, a very simple ritual to help, and just, you know, the importance of spiritual healing and why it's something that needs to be done, spiritual and physical, really, and how that can affect your magic. So uh, I've been getting a lot of questions, a lot of emails. I did say I would do a part two, so this is it. This is part two. If you did not see that video, I will link it um, at the end of this one so you can kind of go back a little bit and, and, and get that information, and then these two will somewhat tie together. All right, so... Um, Spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing, getting cleansed, what does it mean, how does it work, why you should do it, why does it affect your magic, and where do you start? All right, so first and foremost, if you've been following me a while, you know that I am big on ritual baths and staying spiritually cleansed. I talk about that all the time and the importance of making sure that you're not carrying any energy that's negative or that's not yours or that you don't need because you will block the good things that should be coming to you or that you're trying to bring in for your life, okay? Um, if you're not familiar what a spiritual bath is, then you may want to go through my video library. I talk about it pretty often and I give some great recipes so you can kind of understand what the purpose of that is. But for tonight, I wanna go over some different modalities and how physically healing and spiritually healing go hand in hand and this will also help you in boosting and aiding your candle magic. Now, number one, um, why, why do you want to do both? Well, let's start at the basics. We are a soul, a spirit, and we are holding, we are dwelling inside of a physical package. Um, our, as we all know, our spirit, our brain, our heart is connected in, in the physical body. When there is a disruption in the energy field, we are energetic beings. This is not pseudoscience. This is, you know, if you go back to like, I don't know, middle school physics, we are energetic beings. We have energy that radiates off us because we are living. When your energetic field is off balance or something is affecting it or something is attached to it that's not supposed to be there, it will affect your emotional, physical energy, how you feel, okay? If you're carrying negative energy, you will walk around being angry or anxious or depressed or can't sleep or, can't, or worried or something, okay? And we all know, this has been proven, that stress and worry, depression, anxiety, sleep deprivation, overeating, undereating, all of that affects the physical body, blood pressure, um, uh, just, just your physical, I'm not going to run down the list, but just your physical well-being and how you function and operate on a daily basis. The way your body is operating is, or the way your body functions and process things is connected to your brain. Your brain sends signals to different parts of your body to tell it what to do. So do you see what I'm saying, how all of these play a part? If your energy's off, then your physical's off, and your brain is off, then you start acting out and, and you're off. So you're, maybe you're too emotional, or maybe you're not emotional at all, okay? And then you, especially for those of you that are trying to work your magic, you're doing your candle magic or your meditations or whatever it is that you're trying to do to manifest certain things in your life. If you can't focus, physically can't focus, if you're not getting enough sleep at night, if you're having mood swings and you're up and down and all around and all over the place, that is going to hinder you when it's time to sit down and get quiet and focus on what you want. 
Now, one may say, well, I know exactly what I want and I know how to perform the rituals. Great. But again, if you're not healed, if you're holding on to something that's not serving you in the highest good, but it is causing you pain or a disease, an abnormal condition, or it's affecting you in any way, then that, whether it's physical or whether it's energetic, is going to play a part in how well you are able to manifest and how well your rituals will work for you, okay? Now, <clears throat> I don't want to go too far off subject, but <sighs> let me start with the physical healing. So, a lot of people tend to self-medicate, and they do that by whichever means that that is, drinking, smoking, whatever the vice is, in order to feel better. Um, a lot of people go to therapy, they seek out um, the help of a physician or a psychologist, psychiatrist or something, they go that route in order to feel better. When things aren't going well in your life and you feel like you've exhausted all your physical um, capabilities, you've done, I've done everything in my power to get my finances right or to um, you know, help this person in this situation or to fix my relationship or, you know, save my marriage or whatever it is, um, then sometimes people result to spiritual work, again, to feel better. But what happens when everything you've done, including your spiritual work, isn't working and you're not seeing any results? Is it that it's not supposed to be or is there something that's blocking you or what? I talk to a lot of people and I would say more than half of the people I talk to are blocking themselves okay the good thing about that is they already know that so you got to be real with yourself don't be in denial be real with yourself because most people know that they're their own blockage people are hurting and maybe they're not hurting but we're all holding on everyone holds on to something that they need to release to free up that space in order to vibrate at a higher frequency and be better at manifesting and going deeper into your spirituality to where you don't even have to light candles you can just think it and it comes wouldn't that be nice wouldn't it be nice to just think of something and it happens now that it happens a lot already for a lot of people and if you're one that understands the law of attraction and making sure that your thoughts and the words out of your mouth are aligned you may be seeing this but what if you could see it faster? What if there was no delay? Because time doesn't exist anymore anyway. But what if there was truly no delay in what it is that you wanted and when you got it and when you saw it? Another thing that a lot of people are realizing or know already that because we live in a world, no matter where you are, but if you're in America or if you're you know, in any other country that is unfortunately going through some you know we all know what's going on in the world going through some things that are not positive it's almost as if the negative thoughts that you have and the stuff that you don't want will come even faster I don't want to be late for work I don't want to be late for work you're late for work you know you get pulled over the car the tag the tire blows out the kid gets sick and you got to leave and you have no uh, PTO to cover those days so you see what I'm saying that's why I talk about you got to try to keep your th thoughts focused on what you want to happen. But that's not what this video is about. Um, this video is about releasing these feelings that you don't need. These energetic keys that have, you know, ha are holding a space. That have locked a space of you. They're holding you. It's holding on to you. Okay. Whether it's a big, um, people go through traumatic events, things happen, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you witness something, a loss, uh, you know, the death and the loss of a loved one, of a pet, um, something really, really detrimental like that. Sometimes people are just critical of themselves, and I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay, you know, saying that this is lesser than the other, but you know sometimes we're our own worst critics the reason why we're depressed and anxious is because we're beating ourselves up we're beating ourselves up nobody's doing it to us no one said hey you you, you know you're stupid and you're not good enough you did that to yourself because of 
Maybe you, you know, you didn't get that job you wanted or you didn't get into the college you wanted or, you know, you, your, you, you, your boyfriend when you were 16 left you and you're 35 still wallowing over it, okay? And you're beating yourself up asking, well, why? I must not be this. I must not be good enough. I must be X, Y, and Z. That's everything that's negative and not anything positive. Or wondering, what is it about me that I can't move forward? Why am I always broke with no money? How come I don't have any friends? You know, my health is failing. No one like, you know what I'm saying? We as humans, naturally, we are all in our heads. We're constantly thinking around the clock, day by day. And a lot of times it breaks my heart when I talk to people that are, are imposing their own self pain when they don't have to, okay? That's not 100% your fault. Again, we live in a society, especially here in the US, where we're being polluted by media, um, billboards, radio, TV, food, you are being programmed to think negatively about yourself. You are being programmed to believe that if you don't look like whatever's on the TV, then you are less than. You are being programmed that if you don't make a certain amount of money and have these material things that you are less than. You are being programmed that if you don't go to a shrink or go to a doctor or take these pharmaceutical drugs that you can't heal yourself. You are being programmed that this is the way that it is and it's the way it's going to be and of course i'll get back to that get back to that that what i might that that thought i was going to say in a second but if but the point is you're being wired in here and you're telling yourself that or maybe outside influences people get bullied whatever <sighs> sorry i'm trying to stay not go far too off but i'm trying to stay right here so with that is needing to release these feelings, these thoughts, these events that have occurred in your life from whenever. You know, your fish died at six and every time you see a fish, it reminds you of it. <laughs> I'm not laughing. That actually happened to me. Um, <laughs> it did. But um, you're just holding on to stuff that's taking up space that's, that's like putting a shield that's blocking you from what you're supposed to be having. So think of it like this. All those little things going on, imagine imagine each one of those is a key. And those keys is stuck to your, pinned to your clothing. You got heartbreak, you got the fish that died, and the dog that ran away, and your sister stopped talking to you, and your boss yelled at you at work last week, and you didn't get the SATs, you dropped out of college. Imagine all those things are little keys, and they're all over you. They're just hooked on, and you're bogged down with these heavy metal keys, and your life feels like a, a thunderstorm. And, you know, you're able to get through the day and maybe you are still able to maintain the functions of friends and socializing and this and that and the other. But late at night when you're at home, you're thinking about these things that have happened that didn't go well. Sometimes people grieve. Oh, man, I talk to people that have been grieving for years, 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 years. Now, there's no time limit on grief. Um... I don't think you ever get over the loss of someone that you loved. You just get to a different place or it goes to a different place where you're able to carry on. But sometimes people grieve so heavily and so hard that from the day that they found out that person was gone to 10 years later, they, are, they have been affected. Their whole life has been changed. Their life has stopped. They have spent all this time grieving and missed a big portion of their life. And, you know... We all know that, or we all want to believe. Well, yeah, we all know that. You always tell someone, you know, this person wouldn't want you to feel that way. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Um, anyone is allowed to grieve as long as they want, but it's not fair to you. You're not being fair to yourself by missing out on life because you're still here, okay? You need to release that not the grief necessarily, but release that hold on you so that you can live and, and be the best that you can be, even though this has happened. It will still be there. It won't go away, but you don't have to be so hard on yourself with the blame, with the guilt, okay? My father passed away. I was on the phone with him when he took his last breath, and I didn't 
I didn't really know, I didn't know for sure the, the severity of his condition, but I didn't make an, I didn't make, I didn't plan a trip to go out and see him. I wanted to see him and I didn't. I was like, oh, I have work, I have this, I have that. And I should have went to see him because that two week period from the time I found out that he was sick and that two weeks where I was kind of like lingering, like, oh, well, let me see what happens. He passed away and I, I never got to see him and I still hold on to that. I've, I've blamed myself like, gosh, I should have went to go see him. It's, that's not my fault. I didn't, I didn't know he was going to pass in two weeks and I can't allow that to affect me and it did for a while but I'm healing from that and I'm gonna tell you why in just a second so anyway back to the keys on your shirt in the life that feels like a thunderstorm and every time you go outside or just your life you're getting struck by lightning it's like something else and something else these lightning strikes are hitting these keys because well we know metal and electricity are not a good combination and you're like trying to get you're trying to get somewhere you're trying to get things in your life better you're trying to do your spiritual work you're trying to do your candle magic you're trying to manifest that new job or that better car or money or the trip or the love or whatever you're trying to manifest so imagine you're trying to start a bonfire in the middle of a thunderstorm and you're like i can't get this fire lit well yeah it's thundering hi my my love over here hi so that's what's happening when you're holding on to this emotional stuff. That's what's happening to your magic. That's what's happening to your spells and your candles. You're trying to manifest and it's not happening. It's like trying to light a match at a beach, trying to start a bonfire in a rainstorm. It's not gonna work, okay? Maybe one day you wake up and you feel better, so it's not storming, it's just drizzling. So you get your bond started, bonfire for a little bit, and then the next day, you have a bad day at work and you feel like crap and you were almost there was coming the manifestation was on its way and poof it never made it or it did and it didn't come all the way you wanted it to do you get what i'm saying i hope that analogy made sense makes sense to me so the purpose is you got to get rid of these keys you got to take them off so you stop getting shocked by the rainstorm and you can you know move on to what you're trying to do so all right now that that's out the way let's talk about some of the things that I'm doing um, that I've shared with people that a lot of people know this and some of you don't but some modalities that you should at least look into and do some research and try okay um, let me just say this Western medicine does work for some things it does I'm not huge on Western medicine. I don't knock it. You know, if I have a terrible migraine, I'll take some Excedrin. Um, you know, if I'm, which is, I don't know if I've ever really had this, but you know, you get an ear infection or you get something, a sinus infection, those things can be dangerous. You go to the doctor, you get some medication to treat it so it doesn't get worse. Um, and that's, for me, that's real seldom because I, I do all natural medicine. But anyway, so Western medicine can work for certain things. I do believe everyone should have someone that they can talk to that's non-judgmental. So therapy or counseling, that's fine. I've done it, didn't work for me. Doesn't make sense to go pay somebody to listen to me talk about a problem week after week after week. I'm still wallowing in it. Like, no, get rid of it, get rid of it. So um, if you are someone who does not believe in um, healing through energy or healing through plant medicine, healing through natural things if you think marijuana is a drug and not a medicine but you would rather take the laboratory concocted pharmaceuticals to you know treat the hangnail that will make your big toe fall off then turn off this video right now because you ain't ready and some of the things that i'm about to share with you guys is going to get real and some of y'all may be like i ain't doing that and that's fine but um and these things aren't for everybody but I've talked to more people that have benefited than that have not. So, first and foremost, um, besides the ritual baths, besides carrying your crystals, um, besides meditation, meditation does work, and I'm getting back into meditating better. You guys know I don't meditate like that. I don't sit quietly. I, sh I want to, but I don't because my mind is always like, whew, okay. Um, but I am getting back into meditation. I color. I do things like that you guys already know I've talked about that so I used to smoke weed a lot of weed like 
a lot of weed, a lot. When I was 17, 18, through my, um, all the way to like my mid 20s almost. And when I was really young, like 19, 20, uh, 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 I'm sorry, 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 sorry. She's gonna knock this camera over. Over here, my love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Um, it was practically a car note. It was, I calculated it one day and I was spending the same amount on weed in a month maybe, maybe less, maybe, I don't remember, maybe a two week pay period that I was for my monthly car note. And that's a little, like there's people that smoke more than me. I was smoking it, I thought I was smoking it for recreational, but I knew like I would feel like, oh, I can't sleep, I need to smoke. Anxiety, I need to smoke. Um, sometimes I get a headache, I need to smoke. I'm going out, I need to smoke. It's Tuesday morning, I'm gonna smoke. Now on the flip side of that, the job that I was in for 12 years was very stressful and I didn't really, I knew but I didn't, I don't know if I was in denial, that I was self-medicating with marijuana to cope with the stress from the job. And it was a great paying job, but the stress was terrible. But I stayed because of the money and <sighs> all I have to say is I'm grateful for the experience, but boy, I spent 12 years too many in that job. So I was self-medicating with marijuana. I drank too. I drank social. I drink because I like to do it. I still drink wine. Y'all know that. But, you know, some people will say, oh, well, weed is a drug. You shouldn't do it. It's for, rec you're having fun with it. But no, it is a medicine and it can help. A lot of people use it for medicine. And I think, you know, all of you watching this video already know that. So that's one thing. I smoke now very little, like, like I had a really bad headache the other morning and I had like a little doobie or I have edibles, but all my edibles, I take like a bite. So like a bag of edibles will last me like three months. I actually have a joint for like three months. So that's how little I smoke now. But I do when I feel like I can't sleep um, or those sorts of things. So that's one. Number two is working with plant medicines aside from marijuana. So I have had one hell of an experience with psilocybin mushrooms, also known as shrooms. Um, I've tried shrooms on several different occasions. My first time trying them was when I was about 16, and I had a very enlightening experience, even though I didn't understand how powerful the medicine was and how much healing I could benefit from it. First couple of times it was kind of, you know, once was for the experiment to see what it was about. Next time was like, oh yeah, that was fun, I liked it, let's do it again. And then I, then I tried to use it for healing and it worked, I just didn't know it worked at the time. So fast forward till now, um, I've had some recent uh, experiences with mushrooms and can I tell you when you use them for their purpose, when you have an intention, and like I had, you know, my incense going and I had my guided meditation and I had done my ritual bath and I had set my intention for what I wanted it to do. Can I tell you how much better I felt? And I didn't notice I felt better right away. It wasn't till probably the next day, but I was so calm and the reason why this is big for me is because I didn't know I had anxiety. Like, I know, it's like, how do you not know that? Or I didn't realize how much anxiety I had um, until it started to go away. And it's still there a little bit. I, I, I don't think it's anxiety. I just get excited easily. But the anxiety, and you guys know, you know that chatter in the back of your mind? Well, we all have it, and I don't know that that ever all the way goes away, but sometimes there's a lot of chatter. There's your mind is just surfing all day long. You're laying in bed. You've got 2,900 thoughts in your head, okay? Or you're nervously anxious. Um, you know, when you're running late or finances, you start getting that anxiety. It's, you can feel it here. Your heart's racing, and you're, like, your mind is just, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? That. It happens to me, too. Even though I practice magic, I'm, you know, still a normal person a regular you know normal sort of <laughs> maybe not normal but you get it so the chatter and because I'm so busy and because I have all these people I'm trying to help and help myself and my family I'm taking care of all this stuff like huh, 
when you live like that for so long, it becomes so normal that when it stops, you were like, wow. So anyway, um, I've taken anti-anxieties once in my life, about seven, eight years ago, when my mother had cancer and she had surgery, and I had to go into the ICU, which you would think coming from a medical background, I would've been okay, but I wasn't, because it was my mom. So I you know, went to see my doctor, it was a total basket case, took anti-anxieties, the anxiety went away. I got some other side effects, but it went away, that mental chatter went away. I was like, whoa, it's kind of scary. Since then, I've had anxiety. <laughs> And so, anyway, the psilocybin mushrooms, this was recent too, this was, I don't know, probably a couple months ago, whatnot. I felt so much better the next day. The chatter stopped. I had a sense of calm and peace. Some revelations came to me. I had a very interesting experience and connection. Um, uh, psychedelic medicine, some people use what's called the spirit molecule, DMT, Ayahuasca, I have not tried those. Um, I do plan on going to Peru to try ayahuasca and see how deeply, how deep I can connect spiritually. Um, I don't think, I don't have a lot of heavy, you know, not a, I haven't experienced a lot of things where I feel like I have all this stuff I need to heal from, but there are, there's things there, you know, there are things there. And um, so the mushroom experience was very profound. And what it does is it helps you utilize and tap into the part of your brain that you don't normally use. Of course, it's a category or class one in the United States. It is an illegal substance to work with, to have. Um, and that's a whole nother video. But of course, the government does not want you to get healed, does not want um, anyone to not need the help of pharmaceutical drugs. They don't want you to be spiritual. They don't want you to be calm and at peace because if everyone could manifest what they wanted and everyone was healed and wasn't sick or angry or depressed or violent or fighting, um, if all the food wasn't poisonous and, and we all lived in peace and harmony, nothing bad would ever happen. We would all get along and that's a scary thought. The whole system would crash basically. And yeah, they don't want that because then you won't be able to be controlled by all the subliminal and things directly in our face. And, you know, living on an earth full of peaceful people, well, hell, that's frightening. Who would want to do that, right? Um, really quickly, so during my experience with the medicine, I connected to, you, you are able to venture into these higher dimensions and some of us are in 3d some of us are in 4d some of us are going into 5d and beyond some people are already in the ninth dimension and if you're not sure what that means there's a lot of information on youtube but basically your consciousness gets expanded where you start wakening up and you're like hey wait a minute there's something else going on there you get this feeling of there is a higher energy there is something else that's bigger and greater than all of us that can be tapped into and that can be connected to and it starts to feel better that's why a lot of people are, are um, going outside of their religious roots that they were raised in and tuning into a spiritual path and candle magic witchcraft or you know whatever it is um, we have we here on the earth we have um, worlds in, in dimensions with other beings, life forms that coexist with us, but we can't see them and we can't sense them because they're not physical. They are, they are life forms. And I say life forms because they're not all spirits. I can't really, the ones that I connected with, they weren't spirits because they weren't human that left the body. They were life entities that were in another dimension coexisting with us at the same time um so yeah there's life beings in other dimensions that are parallel to our universe and if your mind is able to open up and see them you can connect with them i physically connected with them and they were so warm and welcoming and downloaded all this information i could see them i could and i wasn't you know i wasn't asleep and i wasn't like crazy like oh on some oh i'm hallucinating no it wasn't like that this was a very peaceful calm um ceremony that i did and i saw them with my two eyes i wasn't dreaming i was awake i heard them 
They shared information with me. I asked them questions. I could see them and they worked on me. They re helped me rewire. And they also, my anxiety got calmed because I got clarity and I got a lot of answers to certain things and better ways to do stuff. So also the medicine itself, the plant medicine of the actual mushroom helped something shifted. It rebalanced the part of the hemispheres in my brain. So that was a very good experience. I have to say I have been way calmer ever since then. I have not, you know, felt anxious or reacted to certain things a certain way. And for the most part, I'm pretty calm and I'm trying to be very nice and loving to everyone. But, you know, hell, shit happens and people piss me off sometimes. Um, but I don't, you know, I just don't let things, they just don't bother me the way they used to. And I just don't worry about anything um, since then. Not that I don't worry about anything, I just don't have the same, my brain don't work the same way. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's one thing. The second thing that I was just recently introduced to from a um, family friend and, and uh, I didn't know about this. I knew, but I didn't know because I hadn't experienced it myself. It's something called hape, or rape, which is a shamanic snuff. It is a tobacco and other plants that are uh, come from the indigenous people. I know that it is found in Peru, Colombia, some South American, maybe Latin American countries. I'm not 100% sure, so please don't yell at me if my all my history isn't correct. But um, these are, from my research, are a lot of Peruvian sacred plants and herbs and tobacco that is grinded down into a powder. In fact, here, I'll show you guys. And it has certain things in it. Some of them have like Palo Santo in it. Some of them have cacao in it. A wide variety. So this is what it looks like. And this is Parika. This came from Peru. And this is administered, when you do a ceremony with the shaman, it is administered through the nasal cavity. And what Hape does is it balances both hemispheres of your brain. Um, this medicine knows where to go and knows how to heal, but you can set an intention for it. I now administer it to myself, but it is different when I do it myself versus when I sit down with the shaman and get it done. Or when I've gotten it done, I should say. Um, the combination of the two, doing you know the one ceremony, then coming, finding this literally at the same time actually, this all happened within about a week time frame. I feel so much better. My appetite has changed. My sleep has gotten better. I'm just, my heart chakra is more open. Like I said, I've always been loving, but it's so much more open. Um, my intentions for it was for forgiveness and really to just calm my anxiety. When I first sat down and had it done, I didn't know I didn't really know what my intention should have been. Like, what am I asking for? I just wanted to heal me and bless me and whatever it's supposed to do. Uh, I felt immediately, I felt like, um, how can I explain this? Like a layer of energy had just fell off. That wasn't needed. And I was surprised because all the ritual baths, Florida water and smudging I do, and I'm like, sheesh, I still had a whole pile layer of energy on me. I felt lighter, I had more energy. Now, that's what I felt at first, and then after that I was like, okay, well that that's it? What What is it? You know, I went on about the, day, the rest of my day and I thought to myself, I don't know what that stuff's supposed to do. I don't even think it's working. But about two to three days later, the chatter back here I still had a good it was diminished with the mushrooms but there was still some the chatter was gone like I was laser I say it was I am laser sharp focused so focused prioritizing just getting things done my mind has just shifted and being able to see things clearly seeing situations clearly and not only that when you're not anxious you can sleep you can relax, you can manifest better. Your spells are stronger. I'm thinking stuff and it's happening. You can sit with your candles and put your energy in it because now your energy is cleansed and it's pure and it's focused and it's not distracted. 
into your work and it like this you'll see results now this isn't for everybody um, you know s some people are like well I don't want to hallucinate or feel or see anything that's fine you don't you know may not be for you but the healing power of these plants is phenomenal okay uh, I can't speak on ayahuasca or DMT I know people that have had these profound experiences and have had major turnarounds and breakthroughs in their life physically getting better mentally and emotionally I'll get back to you guys on that whenever that does come my way um, you know I'm not promoting the use of illegal drugs I guess I have to say that for sake of the video but I am saying that there are things that are being kept from us that can help heal you and it doesn't come in the form of a pill and you know it's gonna be strong and it's gonna be you're gonna go through some stuff while you're healing because you gotta purge and you gotta let go and it's gonna be uncomfortable but you're gonna feel better afterwards and you're gonna see your life turn around um, the latest modality that I've been that I've introduced into my life as of the beginning of this year and continuing on is Reiki and uh, Reiki is the Japanese uh, modality of healing through love and rebalancing the energy centers your chakras rebalancing your energy um, and that has been I mean wow <laughs> that's all I can say my first Reiki session was a couple years ago back in um, Florida and it was 15 minutes and I didn't even know this girl I was at a, uh, an event let her do it and I felt like whew, I feel amazing so it's something I've always wanted to do my father was a Reiki master so I finally I went and I got attuned to uh, I got attuned I'm getting ready to go to to complete my Reiki master and the things that have shifted for the good in my life after the attunement now you don't have to be attuned you can go get Reiki sessions but if you do decide to get the attunement for your own self-love and self-healing and being able to tap into another source of um, energy because you people use Reiki every day but the attunement opens you up to be aligned with more of this energy that you can't access without it um, so I, I got attuned I did I just did my second attunement which has been amazing I just did that a few days ago and uh, I've done Reiki sessions on some clients and they have called me back within days with good news things have changed things have opened up and just rebalancing your energy can make the world of difference um, it can open you up to possibilities that you didn't even think would come your way pretty much so that is what is helping me what is working for me um, there are some other things cambo and a few other things that I have not tried that I'm researching and considering but I, I don't know yet um, cambo is healing through the Amazonic frog um, medicine and that would be a whole nother hour video but you can look that up and like I said this stuff ain't easy you go and purge however that comes out whether it's in tears whether it's in bodily functions whether it's just talking it out um, but you gotta release it you gotta let it go and thinking about it and talking about it may not be enough you may have to do some physical things to let the emotional hurt go to heal the emotions to heal the spirit to become stronger and to increase your manifestation powers yeah Whew, that was a lot okay um I think that's gonna be it for this video I mean everyone else you guys already know the other stuff they tell us to do eat right exercise drink water don't in overindulge in certain things yeah blah 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 we all know that some of us do it some of us do it better some of us don't do it but if you combine all these different things together or you try at least try them don't snub your nose up to it don't say oh, I don't want to do mushrooms or I'm not blowing nothing up my nose just try it 
okay? People are, are self-medicating with coke and meth and all these other things, and they don't realize they're self-medicating. They think they're partying, but they're not. They're self-medicating. Just try, it's a plant medicine. These plants were put on this earth to heal us. Oh, you guys can see it. my plants. I have plants all around my room, all around the house. They were put here. They are nature's medicine. They're here for a reason. So try them. Ask around, you know, see. Again, I can't promote uh, illegal drugs, and I don't know where to get mushrooms, so don't even call me or email me asking because I really don't know. They, they came my way by a whim. <laughs> and the one thing I do know is when you ask spirit for something, if you ask for the right tools to come to you, they will come. So they showed up like they always do. They show up when I need them and then they're gone when I don't. So who knows when that will happen again, but you know, you never know. Um, Hape, I believe, I think I mentioned this, I believe it's legal in the US, but you'd have to find it at like a specialty shop. Um, usually a shaman would be the one that would administer it or have access to it if they travel down to Peru or hell, you could just go down to Peru and buy some. I don't think it's regulated, so like, um, again, I don't know, I shouldn't even speak on that, but I don't think that there is any law here that you would get in trouble for having it, but I don't know. Um, I hope not, because if so, then I might be in trouble after this video. No, we're gonna put a little protection, Shokure, that this video is going to reach the hearts of everyone who needs it, and, um, I'm okay to have my Peruvian snuff. All right, my loves, I'm done talking, I'm sleepy. I love you guys, thank you for watching. I hope this helps, I really, really do. Please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That's the only way I know that you liked it. I really wanna try to get this video to 400 likes. The more likes I get, the more the vibration gets raised, the more people that this video reaches via YouTube. Share it with someone you love, post it on social media, tag me, let me know if you've tried any of this. If you plan on trying any of it, if any of this information has been helpful whatsoever, I appreciate it. Follow my social media, Instagram, One Ritual Way. If you would like to sit with me for a Reiki session or a consultation or reading, um, you can visit my website at oneritualaway.com. My email is oneritualaway at gmail. Be sure, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in the West Adams area of Los Angeles. I work out my home studio. So be sure to put in the subject line in-person appointment um, I will be honest I am selective who I allow to bring over here to my home so I don't you know if you're crazy I ain't gonna see you but um, send me an email you know we can chat talk about what it is you want to work on and we can you know just go from there and if it's not me I hope you find someone else that you trust to help you on your journey if you're not really sure where to start okay all right, you guys, thank you so much. Peace and blessings, love and positive prosperity and vibrations to you, all of you. Please have a safe um, and happy holiday coming up. And 